Well, good morning, everyone. If you'll go ahead and stand with us. Uh, we had a few technical difficulties today, so we do not have uh, lyrics on the screen, but there are QR codes right here on the side to our worship guide where you can find all that information. Who am I that the highest king would welcome? I was lost, but he brought me his love for me. Oh, his love for me. Who the sun sets free, oh, is free. has ransomed me, His grace runs deep. While I was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me. Yes, He died for me, who the sun sets free, oh, is free. Amen. Amen. Well, I just want to welcome you all to uh, this very warm, sunny Colorado morning. Um, wow. Negative 17 this morning was a rude awakening. Uh, I am not used to that anymore, <laughs> but I'm glad you're here. Those of you who are online who decided not to be brave and stay home, good for you guys. We, uh, we salute you. Um, but I'm just so glad that you're all joining us, either online or in person. Uh, it's, it's really a wonderful day to be here together. Uh, today, I want to open up uh, with, a, with a short word of prayer, if you'll close your eyes and uh, pray with me. Oh, Heavenly Father, who has filled the world with beauty, open our eyes to behold your gracious hand in all your works, that rejoicing in your whole creation we may learn to serve you with gladness for the sake of him whom all things were made, your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. When darkness tries 
When darkness tries to roll over my bones When sorrow comes to steal the joy I own When brokenness and pain is all I know I won't be shaken No, I won't be shaken My fear doesn't stand a chance When I stand in your love My fear doesn't stand a chance When I stand in your love My fear doesn't stand a chance When I stand in your love Shame no longer Shame no longer has a place to hide I am not a captive to the eyes I'm not afraid to leave my past behind I won't be shaken No, I won't be shaken My fear doesn't stand a chance Thank you. You can be seated. My name's Dave. I'm an elder here at the church. Uh, welcome to all of you who braved the elements who came out today. And for those of you at home, you're smarter than I am. It's so cold out there today. My fingers were frozen trying to shovel. Um, ladies, if I can have your attention, if you can focus on, on what I'm saying for just a minute. How many guys remember that today's Valentine's Day? Okay, you didn't have to show hands, but I'm proud of you. Um, you know, if, if the guys woke up this morning and wasn't the first thing on their mind, I'm sure it's because... Living with you every day is like Valentine's Day. It's got to be, right? But speaking of Valentine's Day and remembering um, loved ones, whether it's you know, your spouse, your children, grandchildren, um, take a minute and reflect on the love that God has for each of us. You know, he, he loved the world so much he gave his only son that whoever believes in him will have everlasting life. Um, you know, Christ went to the cross willingly. He who knew no sin became sin. Um, just the undeniable and the unending love that God has for us is why we come to the communion table today. If you get your elements ready. 
my hands are still cold. Um, anyway, the night that Price was betrayed, they were having Passover meal. And uh, he took the bread and gave thanks, broke it, and passed it out to his disciples and said, eat this, do this in remembrance of me. And after the supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks. He said, drink, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant that I spilled for forgiveness of sins. If you'll join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. If you'll rise and join fellowship in song. You unravel me with a melody. You surround me with a song of deliverance from my enemies till all my fears are gone. And I'm no longer God, and I'm no longer a slave to fear, I am a child of God. From my mother's womb, from my mother's womb. You have chosen me, love has called my name, and I've been born again to your family, your blood flows through my veins, and I'm no longer a slave to be. Child of God, and I'm no longer a slave. And I am a child of God. Oh.
Yes, Jesus. We thank you for reminding us that we are your children. And as your children, we don't need to worry. We don't need to stress because you offer us rest. Because your yoke is easy and your burden is light. So Jesus, as we continue to worship today, let us be able to rest and be confident as your children. We ask this in your name. Amen. Good morning to everyone. You guys doing good? It's quiet. Yes, there you go. Just because you have a mask on doesn't mean you can't talk. And I can hear you even. That's, uh, yeah, it's great. So maybe we need to have a little check-in. Everybody doing well today? Everybody doing well? Not com- Yeah, good, good. Um, we are going to be back in um, Joshua today. And so if you want to grab your Bibles, we'll be Joshua chapter 6 will be kind of the focal point of where we are, and um, as we get in there, I want to um, just kind of recap, because everything in Joshua has been building up to this point. Everything has been been a build toward um, what is going to take place over the next two chapters, and the next two chapters really um, go together, although most of us probably only know chapter 6. Chapter 6 is the familiar fall of Jericho um, that we all learned if if we were in Sunday school growing up. That was one of those stories that we we learned about and and we know. But chapter 6 and 7 really are kind of inseparable in what was taking place in the communication to God's people. And so it's going to be very important for us to... This week, as we look at Joshua chapter 6, not forget that chapter 7 is coming, and I'm going to do a little bit of bridging between those two as we get in. Um, Everything up to this point has been preparing for battle. Everything has been preparing. If you remember from chapter 1, we have Moses has passed away, and Moses died, and Joshua is coming into charge of Um, the army of God or the people of God. And so as that commander, um, he is going to lead them into the promised land. And so all the things that have happened so far in chapters 1 through 5 are a preparation for the battle that is to come. Um, The first week that we started, we started in in chapter 5, where um, Joshua had this strange encounter with the commander of the Lord's army. And, and, you know, this angelic figure or, you know, very mysterious figure that, um, that shows up in Scripture. And, and so when Joshua um, confronts this commander, or maybe the commander confronts Joshua, not sure exactly which one that was. But as, as they were coming together and, and communicating, Joshua asked that important question, Are you on our side or the side of our enemies? And I think just a pivotal point for this entire story and, and maybe in Scripture is that the commander of the Lord's army says, neither. I'm not on your side. I'm not on your enemy's side. I am on God's side. And so the call in that moment was for God's people to be on God's side. It's not that we're calling God down to our side. It's that we are on his side. We are following his design for the world um, that is around us. And so um, that's, that's such a, a very important thing for us as we think about the people of God preparing for battle and even us preparing for the battles in our own lives. And so the first week we talked about God is calling us to his side, that, that we are to be on God's side and living faithfully to what he has called us to. Then we went back to chapter 1, and that's where we saw the charge to Joshua, the raising up of Joshua, where um, he said, be strong and courageous. I think four different times um, it, is, it is said, be strong and courageous. And so out of that, there, there is a call to this character and, and this um, quality in life that, that we have strength and courage from God, 
and that we must embrace that mindset. We've got to, if we are facing battles in our own hearts and lives, we've got to um, face them with the courage and the strength that God gives. It's not something that we just simply muster up, you know, thinking back to are we on God's side or are we trying to get God on our side? Going to God's side shows that, he, that we are embracing the strength and courage that he wants to give us. Then as the spies go out in chapter 2, and Rahab is um, housing the spies, and they are checking out the land, what is there, and, and, and how um, the attack is, is going to take place, and kind of evaluating that situation of, of, of what will be, we see that God offers grace to those who respond in faith. Um, which is you know, very important for us as we think about the battles that we face in our own lives, that, that as we remember in Ephesians 6, our battle is not against flesh and blood. Our, our battle is against principalities, powers, those spiritual matters and those things that haunt us inside. It's not me against you. It's not us against them. It is that God is trying to call all of our hearts to his side. And he offers grace to to those who respond in faith. And so Rahab, who becomes a very important character in the battle story of chapter 6, we see the introduction of her life in uh, in, in chapter 2. And so um, that response of faith from her and the offer of grace from the people of God, and we see um, that lesson. And then the last couple of weeks, we've been looking at the personal discipline of holiness, of, of looking at our lives as consecrated, as set apart for God's purpose. And many times I don't think that we take that mindset into our everyday lives. Um, you know, we may think about that on Sundays or when we get together for a study or, you know, something that is focused on spiritual matters. But in everyday life, we are to be set apart as the people of God. We, we should carry a mindset that there are opportunities all around us that God is providing and, and that we want to see his presence at work, and so we will act in obedience to just exactly that. And so um, we know that God desires for us to be set apart in holiness for his pur- purpose, um, which, is, um, which we will be fulfilling in faith that should be sacred and not a souvenir faith that we're just trying to hold on um, to items, but that it is penetrating and transforming into our hearts and lives. All of these things, this is one through chapters one through five, all of this is preparing for battle. All of this is preparing the people of God, crossing over the river, getting close to the city, getting closer to the promised land, into the land that they're going to dwell in, all of the battles that are going to come from chapter 6 all the way until um, I think it's chapter 23 or so of Joshua, where they are coming into the land and, and moving the Canaanites out of the land or destroying them, which is another piece that we'll talk about um, as well probably next week. Um, but, but in this invasion of the promised land and God is giving over to them what had been promised in generations past, these are the battles that they are facing um, and all of the preparation that has been taking place um, were those things that we have discussed. And so I want us to just consider as we begin, as we get into chapter 6, I want us to just look inside of our own hearts and lives, into our own circumstances, into our own relationships. And, uh, and, and I want us just to consider, what are the battles that we fight? What are the battles that you fight? What are the demons that seem to be haunting you on an ongoing basis? What are those things that you struggle with on an, in an ongoing way, and you think, I wish God would just remove this, but it seems to be just a constant struggle. In many cases, I think a battle is a battle for forgiveness. It's where in our own hearts we are harboring bitterness and holding things against people that may or may not even know that they have offended us or, or have done anything. Maybe they do, but, but we, we hold on to that grudge and, and we don't want to let go of 
um, those things that, that weigh us down, they, they really slow us down. It's a way that they control us rather than us living in the freedom that God has provided. But that's a battle that I think many people face, that as they think of the relationships in their lives, there is a battle for forgiveness. There's just conflict that comes up too. There's disagreements, there's things that we got to work through, and, and whether we overpower or cower away or deal with in a peacemaking um, manner, conflict is something that is a regular battle in lives as we have relationships and, and share lives with others. It could be something uh, along the lines of a, a lifelong addiction. It could be something that, that has haunted you and, and just seems to come back and grab your heart or your life or your habits and, and just pulls you along. And so this battle of addiction just continues to reoccur. And you think, oh, I wish that would just go away. I wish it would be gone. I wish I didn't have to struggle with that. I wish I could just be simply free, but the battle is there. It could be simple things such as laziness. Maybe we just um, don't have the motivation to, to get things done, or, or you know, we'd rather just sit back on our laurels. Um, achievement may be another, p- another battle that we have that we just try to achieve so hard that it puts the pressure on the people all around us, and it crushes lives. It's a battle that we face many times in just trying to accomplish more and more and more, and we feel like that is where fulfillment is going to come in. could be a battle of abuse, either as abuser or victim of abuse. It could be depression, anxiety, or any number of things. But one thing is true, that all of us, all of us face battles in our own lives. All of us face those things that, that as we stand up against them, we wonder if we will win that day or they will win that day, um, meaning the battles, not necessarily people that stand against us. And so as we face those battles, the message of Joshua, I think, is, is even more important for us, and, and these first five chapters, even more important for us, that have we gone through the preparation? Are we ready for the battle? Do we have the strength and courage from God? Are we, are we living faithfully to what God has called us to? And, and how are we prepared for the battles that we face? Because the people of God in Joshua 6 are walking into their battles. I love um, sports analogies, particularly when it comes to battles. I, you guys have probably noticed that. Um, and, and this past week, I watched a, a documentary movie um, on, it was called Iron Mind, and it was a podcaster who interviewed a musician, and the musician challenged this interviewer, interviewer to um, take on the challenge of doing a half Ironman triathlon. And, and basically, this guy is, you know, he's, he's clearly a fit guy, right, in the, in the video. But, but, you know, the challenge of doing something brand new was, was um, something that this musician threw back at this um, podcaster. And so they went and, and embarked, and, and it's the story of their journey of, of working through and whether they, would, whether they would accomplish together, whether one of them would, would succeed, one of them would fail, and they would go through all of the training process to do this Ironman triathlon. And in the first, one of the first training sessions that this guy had with, as he was working on his biking, um, they, they brought in a trainer, and this trainer just went straight in on uh, like psychology of how your past interrupts the battles that you face in your future. And so he's, he's, his challenge of the day was to ride the bike and push his heart rate as far as he could on the bike to be able to see where kind of that cap was so that they could figure out um, heart rate zones. And so as he's pedaling along, it, it, it clearly on his face and, and in what they were describing, it's getting harder and harder and harder. And as it gets harder and harder, this trainer just says, all right, you're going to, in the next couple of minutes, you're going to feel like you want to stop, that you want to quit 
that you want to quit pedaling, you want to stop moving on, but you've got to think of every time someone told you that you were going to fail. You have to think of all of those people that told you that you were never going to succeed in life. And this guy is, you know, his history is, is success on Wall Street, and he, and he walked away from, from a lot of that. And, and so very high-achieving type A personality, and he is just breaking down on, on, the, on the bike. And, and as he gets done and he gets finished, and they call the time and, and they got all the readings that they need, he just basically collapses out of that time because just in the pressure of that, you know, pushing through that simple um, exercise of, of riding the bike, it pushed all of this stuff from the battles of his past up to the surface because of the way he was facing um, this, this challenge. And, and, you know, I think a piece of us facing battles in our own lives what battles do whenever we're facing those things that we feel like we can't go on, those things that are standing in our way, those walls that need to come down, whatever that, whatever that is represented in your life, as we face those battles and, and, and we confront those things, all of our brokenness comes to the surface. All of the things that we have compromised and all of um, the struggles within those battles and in the past push all the way to the surface. And so in those battles, we have an opportunity to struggle with all of those things. And the question is, in our spiritual lives, will we be faithful? Will we be on God's side? Or will we just simply spin our wheels and battle in ways that we have learned our habits, we have learned how to cope? Or are we going to allow God to come in and transform and change our lives to move us through in victory. Well, Joshua chapter 6 and 7 is a tale of two different battles. Two different battles where the um, demons of Israel's past surface through the process. And, and these are demons that this generation may not even be fully aware of except that this, these episodes happen. And, and because you know that, that it was a different generation that came out of the land of Egypt and is, and is marching in to the promised land. But as, we, as they face this um, battle in front of them of Jericho and then um, Ai um, that comes in chapter 7, it's a contrast of two different things that happen. Jericho is a picture of success. It's a picture of, yes, we have moved to God's side. We are following God's way. We are doing the things that he has called us to do. And then Ai is the struggle of unfaithfulness. It is oh, you know what, I think we can just do it on our own. I think, we can, I think there are some things that are valuable that God is cheating us out of. And, and so these two battles stand as a contrast in the history of God's people for us to think about, I think, those battles that we face in our own lives. There are some myths that I think that we believe um, inside of our battles as we think of them in terms of spiritually what God has called us to. And, and, and you know, we think in terms of if, if I am living faithfully to God, everything is just simply going to work out. And I think some of that myth comes from this type of story in Jericho. But there's, there's some extra verses in here that we don't always focus on that I think give and shed light over those things. Many times we think that if we are obedient, um, that, that things will just fall into place effortlessly. That, that, that we're just, you know, if I just align my heart with God's heart and, and I march on through life, that there is going to be no struggle. Everything is just going to work out okay, and it's going to be just effortless. If we're following God's will, um, that there is going to be relative ease in which we can face life and challenges that following God is just simply going to be an exercise of passive participation. That I can do my devotions, I can say my prayers, and everything should just simply work out in lives. Now, all of us, 
Every single one of us, young and old, in this room, know that to be a lie, don't we? I mean, we, we know, we've, we've aligned our hearts with God, we've, we've done our devotions, and we've faced those challenges and, and the struggles that were in front of us, and I think that's one of um, the big pieces of, of takeaway for, um, for this passage and for us struggling with battles in our own lives is that God's deliverance does not come without struggle. That guy was as he was as he was pushing through all of those different parts of, of the training and moving through evaluation of his life, he had to struggle with heroin addiction that he had in the past. He had to struggle with achievement that he had done and, and he was pushing through those things. And so even though he was on a good path to achieve good things, there was still great struggle. And so as we see this story, as we read through, we're going to see that not only is God's deliverance there, but there is struggle as well. In Joshua chapter 6, it begins um, in verse 1, it says, Now Jericho was shut up inside and outside because of the people of Israel. None went out and none came in. They basically had the place surrounded. They, they weren't letting anyone out. Everyone w- who was in the city was in it to win it or in it to lose it, however you want to you view that. But they had everything surrounded. Nobody was moving in and out of the area. And so um, they began to take the initial steps of this battle. And, and Joshua gets the word from God. It says, "...in the word of the Lord, um, and the Lord said to Joshua..." See, I have given Jericho into your hand. With its king and mighty men of valor, you shall march around the city, all of the men of war going around the city once. Thus shall you do for six days. This um, picture of is one of those places that I think that we get that idea that if we are on God's side, if we are marching through those battles, and he is going to give deliverance, that it's going to be without Struggle. That it's going to be just just active participation, or maybe even passive participation in what God's plan is for our lives. That that if we just go through the motions, everything is going to, as it does here, fall into place. Right, and and so um, as they're as they're going in, God is giving instructions. Here's your preparations. Here's your preparation for war. You're going to march around that city once each day for six days. You're going to blow the horn. And, and if you guys have never heard one of those horns blown, I know um, Dave Wampler, I think, has one of those. And he was doing that the nights of uh, when everybody was yelling on the, uh, oh, during the pandemic stuff. The howl. Yes, thank you. Yes, during the howl, he would blow that. And he lives at the top of Conifer Mountain. We're down towards the bottom of Kings Valley. And we could hear a couple of nights we kind of coordinated to where we'd be outside at exactly the same time, and he blew it. And we could hear all the way from there, we could hear that horn blowing. And so imagine the intimidation that would have taken place as all of this army has surrounded. And Jericho wasn't a huge place, you know, maybe 8,000 people. It wasn't like they're you know, invading millions of people inside. It was, it was a, pretty small, um, a pretty small city. I was there, and so you have all of these people surrounding, marching around, blowing these horns, making noise, and very intimidation, intimidating for um, those people. And so he gave the instruction that they are to do that each day, and then seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of ram's horns um, before the ark, on the seventh day you shall march around the city seven times, and the priest shall blow the trumpets. And, they, and when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, when you hear the sound of the trumpet, then all the people shall shout with a great shout, and the wall of the city will fall down flat. And the people shall go up, every one straight before him. So Joshua, the son of Nun, called the priests and said to them, Take up the Ark of the Covenant and the seven priests and and bear the seven trumpets of ram's horns before the Ark of the Lord. And he said to the people, Go forward, march around the city, and let the the armed men pass on before the Ark 
of the Lord. And so you've got these components. The presence of God is going with the ark of God. You've got the noise of the trumpets and the priests that are, that are coming along. You've got um, the, the army men that are marching around. And so very intimidating sight for this city. But the miraculous part, the wonders that they are going to see is when they give that great shout and the walls fall down. Here's where I think we get the sense of some of those lies inside of the battles that we face. We think that we are going to simply align ourselves in obedience to what God has, has called us to do. And so when we give that great shout against that battle and we renounce those habits and those, those addictions and those battles and those areas that somehow magically all of the walls are going to fall down that everything is just going to work out for our benefit. But then I, I'm reminded of that part where the commander of the Lord says, I'm not for you or for your enemy. I'm calling you to struggle and fight and battle in the Lord's army, to, to continue that struggle forward, which may continue on and on and on. The battle didn't stop with the falling of the wall. The battle actually just began when God made that fall. Think about that in terms of our personal battles. Whenever we claim victory of what God has done, we're going to live in obedience. We, we are giving that great shout. God is making a great move for us, and things seem to be coming together. But remember, that is only the beginning of that battle. Going down um, through some of the rest of the passage, it just shows and gives the account of them following through on the preparation, giving the marches around, and then in verse 15, on the seventh day, they rose early in the um, dawn of the day and marched around the city in the same manner seven times, and it was only on that day that they marched around the city seven times. And the seventh time, when the priests had blown the trumpets, Joshua said to the people, Shout for the Lord has given you the city, and the city and all that is within it shall be devoted to the Lord for destruction. Only Rahab the prostitute and all who are with her and her house shall live, because she hid the messengers whom we sent. But you keep, your, keep yourselves from the things devoted to destruction, lest when you have devoted them, you take any of the devoted things and make the camp of Israel a thing for destruction and bring trouble upon it. But all silver and gold and every vessel of bronze and iron are holy to the Lord. They shall go into the treasury of the Lord. So the people shouted and the trumpets were blown. As soon as the people heard the sound of the trumpet, the people shouted the great shout, and the wall fell down flat, so that the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they captured the city. This is where we usually stop the story. This is where we usually say, I need to claim victory in the battles of my life. I need to give this great shout of victory, and God is going to crumble all of those things in my life. No longer is it going to be a struggle. No longer is it going to be painful. No longer is it going to be difficult. But we have to see the next verse, because really the fight had just started. And the next verse says, and they devoted all of the city to destruction. Do we think that God just made that happen, said both men and women, young and old, oxen, sheep, donkeys with the edge of the sword. Do we think God was just there with a magical sword and, and just making all of those things go away? That's where, in, in that one verse, we focus so much on here's what God has done to crumble and give us that great sense of, of here's where we're going, but then the battle and the struggle is there. This is where that, I, th I think, for each of us, in our own personal battles, we give up so quickly. Because we think that 
just because the walls fell, there is a sense of elation and energy and victory in a particular moment that everything is going to just work out. But it is a call in, in, in God's battle and our lives for an ongoing struggle with whatever it is that we are working through. And what you see from this point on, you see the fight that is happening from these people who are, who are going through the city and taking everything for um, the people of God. And you see the rescue and the grace that is shown to Rahab. And then in chapter 7 and verse 1, it says, But the people of Israel broke faith in regard to the devoted things. This is the danger, I think, in believing those lies that just because the walls fell, there is a simple, quick victory that is shown right away, and we don't struggle all the way through. We don't remain faithful and obedient to what God has called us to, that everything is going to work out, but that's when the compromises happen, when we feel like, oh, everything is just going to work out okay. Then we begin to compromise. We see that there may be some value in just taking some things for ourselves. God just wants me to be happy anyway, right? He just wants me to be fulfilled. And and, and we begin to make compromises instead of seeing the battle through faithfully to what God has called us to. We make compromises. What are those battles that you're facing What are the compromises that you have made? What are the places where you thought, oh, you know what, this is a place where the victory has happened and I'm going to claim God's victory over it, yet the struggle continued and you compromised and you fell and you stumbled and you continue to struggle forward? What are those battles? What are those demons? What are those addictions? What are those things that weigh you down? And how does God want you to struggle through? By his grace. We do see his grace through all of these things. Even though all of the city is destroyed, we're going to talk about this next week. Because I think there is a problem in this passage that people have with the nature of God. Because you see, they go in, they kill all men, women, and children... All the animals, which probably hurts the Colorado crowd even more than the, than, than the men, women, and children. But, I mean, that's a whole other issue, right, that we, that we deal with. But, but seeing that, that they are doing God's work, they are destroying everything in their path, and how is this consistent with what we see in Exodus, that God is compassionate, that he is slow to anger, that he is faithful, that he has loyal love. How do we reconcile those things together? There's a good explanation for that, and that's your cliffhanger for next week, all right? Um, we're going we're gonna to work on trying to resolve some of those things, but until then, we all have battles. We all have those struggles. We all have those things that we think, you know what? I thought this was just going to go away. I thought the walls were going to fall down and everything was going to be easy from that point. And we've got to re-engage. We've got to go back to the preparation to realize that there is strength and courage from God to help us in an ongoing way. We've got to realize that there is grace that is coming to those who respond in faith that is going to help us walk in freedom to be able to see our way through all of those dark battle times and the struggles that we face. I would love to be able to declare victory for all of us over all of those things once and for all. But that was for Christ on the cross. But the struggle continues for each of us. And that ultimate victory, though it is his for those who are faithful and and called by him and his children, We still struggle each and every day. And so the call is back. We keep going through the preparation. We still going through the marches. We still go through the victory chants. And we want 
to see God work. And he can if we continue that struggle on and we rest in him in his victory, his ultimate victory on that day. Many times we can sit squarely within the will of God, fighting for our lives at the same time. I think that is a message of hope in the midst of these battles. We can sit squarely in faithful service to God and obedience to him and still be in the fight for our lives. But we can't stop the fight. We can't become unfaithful and compromise just simply because we saw some walls fall down. And so the call is for perseverance. It's for us to continue forward. It's for us to fight on and struggle forward with those battles that we face. I want you to bow your heads and close your eyes. And as the worship team comes to lead us in our final song, I want you, um, just as a simple act of surrender now, um, to surrender those battles to God. Surrender that battle to Him. Claim His victory over that on, from the cross that, that, that Christ has won. That we aren't the slaves that were back in Egypt. We have been liberated and moving towards the promised land that God promises in the freedom of our hearts. But we still have to struggle forward. And so in commitment and perseverance, we call on the presence of God, just this simple act that we've been doing for several weeks. God, we know that you are present with us, and we want to see your presence at work around us. God, we know that your presence is with us, and we want to see your presence at work around us. We want to be faithful. We want to struggle in the right direction. We want to fight for our lives. We want to be faithful, God. We know that you are here. We know that you are present. And God, let us see the opportunities to struggle forward in that. May we be filled with your grace. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, if you'll go ahead and stand with us as we close. And I'm no longer a slave to fear. I am a child of God.
Amen. Such a good message in in that song that uh, we don't have to live in the slavery, but in the victory of what Christ has given us, that we would struggle forward. Um, A couple of announcements that we have. Uh, We have our annual congregational meeting on February 28th, and so um, we are going to do that in person. And if you have questions or things that you would like for us to respond to, I think there's going to be information going out in the next week or so. Um, to, so that you have all the things that you need um, for the, the budget and, and the vote there. Um, and we, Bible study is going on. See, the podcast is, is, is uh, up and rolling, and we got some new episodes that will be coming out in the next couple of weeks. And so um, pay attention to those. Well, today is, is a bit of uh, bittersweet for us as Jesse is heading out to Texas, heading back to Texas. So this will be his um, last week with us, and so I wanted us just to share um, a prayer for him and his family as they venture out um, onto this next chapter of life. Can we do that yeah. with you? All right. Lord God, we lift up Jesse, Kasha, Justice, and Lord, we um, pray for this next chapter in their lives, and, and Lord, as, as things finish up here in Colorado and, and they head out to um, friends in Texas and family close by, and, and God, we ask that you would just give them your blessing as they walk through um, this next stage. And, and Lord, we thank you for um, bringing him here and, and for um, using him in our uh, midst to teach us the things that he had. And Lord, we also pray blessing for them as they go. And so God, we um, lift them up to you, and we ask this in your name and for your glory. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesse. Um, So now, as we finish up, may God's grace be with you. May you struggle forward being aware of his presence and fighting in his strength and his courage. And may his peace be with you. Amen.